Uh, welcome to another High Ground Podcast, I'm CBW. Hey guys, how are you? Okay, so we were just thinking earlier, you know, uh, if uh, Christopher Reed was alive today and was young, would his career, tra career trajectory be what it was? Or would he have uh, deviated? Because if you look at, say, the likes of, uh, of Ray Fiennes and the late great Alan Rickman, just to name two, yeah. they, uh, they started off by playing predominantly villains. Yeah, yeah. Then if you look at both of them, they went on to could actually play just as well. They could play the nice guys. Yeah, but yeah. Like, uh, you look at James Bond, for instance, uh, from uh, Skyfall onward with uh, him playing M. You act with Ray Fiennes, you actually think he's going to be... Oh, he's going to be one of yeah, the bad yeah. guys now because, you know, and it turns out he's good. And if you look at... But going to Christopher Lee, if you look at... How he, after Dracula and the like, he was always typecast. But uh, that's like a product of, of his time. Do you think Christopher Lee's career trajectory would have been the same oh. had he been alive yeah. and young today? It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I think a lot of films do rely on the preconception that you that you think a certain a person is going to be a certain type of character. So, like, not just um, Bond, but the one I can think of is how they were using Ben Mendelsohn and Captain Marvel. You know, the, yeah. you, you usually, like another person usually plays the bad guy, but then they switch it around. So I like, I, d I don't know, it's a hard question because like if would, the market isn't the same as it was in the, in the 50s, 60s and 70s. I mean, Hammer was massive yeah. back in those days, you know, and, and classic Gothic style horror was, was what was in. I mean, would Chris Philly fit in with horror now? Probably not because they were young one. Out. Yeah, and I mean, the, the last vampire saga we had was Twilight. Can't really think of Sir Christopher walking around in that, telling people things in his baritone voice. I, I, I just can't see that happening. But horror in general, for me, in the independent scene, is really on an upturn. So I think 100% he would fit into that sort of category. I could see him in what we do in the Shadow the Shadows. Yeah, oh, character like Baron 100%. Vanessa. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like... He's like an unnamed, basically Dracula, but yeah. you don't say Dracula, you know. I, it, I, I mean, yeah, I, I think that would be, something like that would be fantastic, because that's, it's knowing. That's, that's really, if you, I, mean, I reckon him and Taika Waititi would have done, oh, he would be in what we do in the shadows. Definitely, yeah. He would have, so it's... Yeah, I, I mean, even if he was just narrating it or something, you know, like... I always thought, you know, after watching with the man with the Goblin Gun, Christopher Lee would have been a great because I, uh, I would have been a perfect James Bond because he's the mirror image of James Bond. Yeah. Had James Bond gone down a different path, and if uh, Scaramanga had been recruited at a young age, he could have been yeah. a double O. And that's what I think. And, and when I when I look at Christopher Lee, because he 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 did have he, you know he, he had the height, but he could have if you look at him, he wasn't uh, an, uh he wasn't ugly. He no, no, he was quite he had, dark and. Distinguished. Yeah. You can imagine him playing the like Ray Fiennes did in Made in Manhattan. You can imagine him doing a romantic lead in contemporary times. Yeah, yeah, one yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'd love to see him act alongside Ray Fiennes. I don't know if that's ever happened, but I, I mean, he's he's one of those guys that like even towards the end of his life. Because he was, he was basically in everything, wasn't he? You know, he was the guy, like, if you want a cameo that's significant, you get Christopher yeah. Lee because he makes a cameo not feel like a cameo. He was in all the... And you look at all the uh, Tim Burton films he was in, like, yeah. what we do in the shadows. I, I think know. he was sort of like Tim Burton. Who knows what we do in the shadows? Like dark shadows. Dark shadows, Dark yeah. shadows. I think he was sort of Tim Burton's version of, you know, like, Scorsese uses De Niro and... Um, uh, who's it uses DiCaprio all the time? Uh, so, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I think he's that sort of Tarantino. Tarantino now, yeah, yeah. How would you like to see him in a Tarantino film? <laughs> yeah, oh, come on, like anyone in yeah, a Tarantino that. film. But yeah, no, I mean, I, I can only think of a few instances where Christopher Lee's not played a villain, and I think the only one jumping out at me at the moment is, I'm sure he's played Sherlock Holmes before. In, in, I'm sure he has, and but I think that was multiple films, and also Gremlins Two always jumps Gremlins out. Gremlins Two, yeah, yeah. For some reason, he's not a bad guy. But he's a mad scientist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, around the world. And in he's in, he's in Hound, the Hammer, Hound of the Baskervilles with Peter Cushion. But I can't remember if he's a villain in that or not. I think he is. If you look at, I mean, the Dracula, 
Ships of Vampire. Yeah. Dracula. Fu Manchu. This is just go to go through IMDb. My God. Yeah, Fu Manchu, I, I forgot about that. That's like one of those cringy black up Fu Manchus. Mm. I, he, he was... He was just a certain type of guy, wasn't he? Yeah. That, you know, you, everyone knows... You know what you're getting when you see a Christopher Lee in the film, don't you? I mean, yeah, even I mean, Star Wars. Great. Yeah, I mean, plays a count. Yeah. <laughs> you know, count how much... I'm so sad that him and Peter Cushion never got to interact because yeah, they're no both one. in the same franchise now. Oh, that was, that was never heard of him, but it's a different generation. But, it's, yeah. but if you also look at it, George Lucas actually did take... He took... Uh, he took one of the great... He took two of the greats, actually. Uh, Peter Cushing and Alec Guinness. Yeah. And legitimised... A New Hope or Star Wars as it was in 77 and you've got with Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith uh, you've, you've got Peter Cushing so you've got another iconic yeah great and I mean even if, I mean, he's in Lord of the Rings he used to read the he was the only one of the uh, cast that cast of, Tolkien yeah he used to read the books yeah. every year and he, he was brilliant and like I said I, I love Made Man with the Girls and Girls That's he was basically weird. there on set um, what's the word uh, like advisor, historical advisor, if you like, for that, for those three. I know you're not a fan of Lord of the Rings, no. are you personally? But um, on set fanboy. Yeah, on, yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, and if if Peter Cushion had done anything that he wasn't sure of, Christopher Lee, he always said Christopher Lee was in the background and going, mm. yes, or no, that's not right, or like, well, Tolkien would have liked this or that, yeah. you know, like, and oh. he was. I don't know, it's so sad that he's, I still can't believe he's gone. I thought he would have lived forever. Yeah, so did I. He, he was on my immortal list. I mean, yeah. Not because he played, not because he played Dracula. No, but just because he's, he's so immortal, isn't yeah. he? I mean, always around. So he, he, I was, I was, I was gutted. I mean, he, he lived to ninety three, but yeah, good old age. He's uh, born the day after me as well, oh. uh, May twenty seventh. Peter Cushion has my birthday. Yeah, you know, the interesting fact actually, Peter Cushion. Um, Christopher Lee and Vincent Price, the big three of the old horror, yeah. they were all born a day after each other Jeez. in May. So Peter Cushion's May 26th, Christopher Lee's May 27th, and Vincent Price is May 28th, I believe. Yeah, that's so they're all like that's a good trifecta. They never huh? knew like about each other until they met, sort of thing. You know? mm. I'd, I'd, yeah, it's hard to think like if he was a young man now. Do you mean yeah? Yeah, see, because are we still assuming he's going to be in the horror field? I think they they would if if. I think that yes, we'll say because, yes, I mean, because he would have uh, horror now. Thanks, thanks to all the great new independent like directors in horror, like Ar Ari Aster, you guy did Hereditary and um, Jordan Peele, especially. Yeah. You know, I, I think there's more room and scope for young actors to become sort of stars in that field now. Uh, you I know, and and see like recurring because directors have sort of use recurring actors now don't they a lot yeah. a lot so you, you i could definitely imagine him popping up in a few of, you know like a few of those guys films but yeah. i don't know yeah it's hard to say really isn't it and one views about today's hollywood today's cinema independent and hollywood is is that uh, whereas in the past people expected you to pay a certain type yeah and now you can build yourself up as a certain type but you can deviate you look at john uh john riley uh, who uh, is where I find out uh, uh, who uh, who was John C. Riley? Oh, John C. Riley. John C. Yeah. Riley. Who was yeah. uh, who was all, a serious actor really, and all he was known for serious actor on films like Boogie Nights, until he went and got with Will Ferrell. Now he does yeah, the comedy Brothers, as well. So you can't remove him. Right. When I see John C. Riley, I think of Set Brothers, and I think of Dale. Yeah, and Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. And Guardians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. now John C. Riley is because Hollywood says you well, you can play this, but we'll also let you play. Yeah. this as well and i think that's one of the beauties now that you you don't necessarily have to be typecast but your what you're known for can actually influence like you said about ben mendelsohn everybody yeah. knows him as playing the bad guy but now since uh since uh he played in captain marvel yeah he, he actually sees comedic side but then again he's yeah, quite right. funny and Vertical Limit. I actually watched Vertical Limit. God, I haven't seen that film for years. I watched yeah, it on the back because I heard yeah. Ben Mendelsohn and Tamira Morrison were in it. Yeah, yeah. and Dr. Bashir from D Space Nine. Blows yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mountain up, the silly bastard. Yeah. But, um, it, yeah, I think, for me, it's always come down to the fact that there is actually a difference between archetype and typecast. You know, I think Chris Philly was never... 
to me, he was never typecast. You know, he was an archetype. You know, like the vampire is an archetype. It's not, it's not something you see all over the place. You know, and it, it like Christopher Lee played played that character so well. And in fact, I think when even when you say Dracula, I don't think of Bella Lugosi immediately. I think of Christopher Lee right away. I and I think there was a time where Bella Lugosi was the the guy to go to for Dracula. I think Christopher Lee still takes some of his cues from that. You know, like the entrance he makes in a lot of the castle scenes, like Blue, welcome to my castle. You know that sort of. Right. Um, but he's an archetype. He's not a type typecast. You know, typecast to me is something like, I don't know, like action seems to typecast a lot of people yeah. because there are no real, you're, you know, if you're a villain in an in a action film or an action hero, that's, that's, that's more of a typecasting than an archetype to me. Whereas something like Christopher Lee playing a vampire, vampires are subconscious in, you know, they're subconscious. Uh, sorry, typecast. Typecasting is very conscious. You d it's done for a reason because you recognise that actor plays a certain certain o character only. You know, it's like Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal was typecast, but in a good way in the eighties. You know, like he would. You watch a Steven Seagal film. You never call them by their character names. You just say, oh, "There's there's Seagal beating yeah. people up," or "There's Arnie." Going off, isn't that? Or, you know, Van Damme doing Van, Van Damme, Damme doing yeah. the splits? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to argue on that. Voice. You don't say in a in a Hammer horror film, you don't go, oh, there's Dracula. You say, there's Christopher Lee. Yeah. There's Christopher Lee playing, playing Dracula. It's not just, oh, there's Christopher Lee doing the same thing he does all the time. Because he doesn't do the same thing he does all the time. When, every time he plays Dracula, to me, it's different. Each Dracula film I used to think when I was younger was related, but they're all just, he dies at the end of every one, doesn't he? So it's time to play a new Dracula in each yeah. one until I think he got sick of them, didn't he? You could also argue that I'd look at Judy Dench, which he played yeah. in the two different incarnations. See, that, that's clever casting. That's very clever casting. That's brilliant casting. Like, you played first the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it last and first, they're going to be chronologically. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, it, what you're saying, yeah, is essentially like, yeah, tech, it's correct. Like, having the person that was cast before come back to the beginning and how is she there from the beginning well it doesn't matter because this is this is n like yeah. or uh, in dalton's uh yeah. joe don baker yeah yeah playing that guy in living daylights and he's, a good, and he's guy. a good guy from golden eye yeah golden eye so yeah, yeah. and i and that's yeah i think he was like the sort of felix light replacement wasn't yeah it? but yeah, funnily enough, there is another link between Bond and Christopher Lee, and yeah. I suppose you know what it is. It's you? Christopher Lee was cousins with Ian Fleming. He was indeed, yeah, so and he was also golfing partners. Given the part of Doctor No originally, oh, or asked asked to do it, and Aaron said no. Ironically, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I I I would have liked to see him play James Bond. Yeah, he's on my list, isn't it? Because he isn't immediately apparent as because. This is this is where the problem with typecasting yeah. comes, comes in, where you think, oh, he's always a bad guy. Um, but I think he had the chops. He, he would have had the chops to play a good, he would have been good Bond. Because, like you say, he's the mirror image of Bond. Yeah. And Bond is tall, dark and handsome in the novels as well. Yeah. And, you know, and you can tell that they're going for that whole sort of split personality thing with Man with the Golden Gun. I think Man with the Golden Gun should get more credit than it deserves. I like it. That's one of my favourites. It was the one that really, when I was young, that introduced me to James Bond. Yeah. And I suppose I could argue that Christopher Lee, uh, Scaramanga, is the reason why I like a certain type of Bond character. I, my yeah. favourite villains are always the ones that mirror images. That could be Bond. Yeah. So you've got uh, Silver, Alec Trevelyan, uh, Red Grant. Yeah, Red Grant. Scaramanga. The, the original yeah. sort of mirror image guy, isn't he? Yeah. And yeah. that's why. And that's all down to. Christopher Lee. Yeah. And all those ones that I've mentioned, yeah, I mean, Silver is uh, the is uh, the obvious one because it's uh, Skyfall, how they are mirror images and the character was a mirror image of yeah. Bond. And he was Bond, wasn't he, essentially, yeah. that character? You know, he was my best agent. You know, that's Bond now. Yeah. So I think that's M M's journey in that film as well. It's all to do with she doesn't want Bond to turn into Silver again. She wants to keep Bond... You know, when when she dies, she's she's happy that Bond has has chosen to be good, you know, and not become Silver or Scaramanga. You know, yeah. like Scaramanga. I'd love to see them do Scaramanga again. I mean, I'm 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 a bit, I I I, I do like Spectre, but 
I think going with the whole Blofeld thing was a bit... So Blofeld's a kind of old-style Bond villain. The molecular-maniacal, destroy-the-world, blah, blah, blah. You know, more ha-ha-ha sort of Bond villain. Whereas I like the, like you say, the darker reserve could be Bond villains. I think you could have easily done Scaramanga, and I'd love to have seen that. My problem with Spectre, slightly off subject, the most problem with Spectre is that they kept, that we all knew it was Blofeld, the fact that they said it's not Blofeld, it's the same very problem with Star Trek Into Darkness, where they it was actually, calm, yeah. yeah, they said, we, all, we know it's calm, why are you hiding it? It makes yeah. no sense. So when the reveal comes in, you just see it and they go, you already well, knew that. Yeah. Well, yeah. what it should have been was someone else, totally. Then yeah. it could have been like, ah, cool. But I like, uh, I do like, and this is fun of a subject, but I do like Spectre for the pure simple reason that they touch heavily on my favourite Bond film, which we are going to do a podcast on soon. Yeah. Well, on Majesty's Secret, Secret Service, because yeah, I found out yeah. the other day it's the 50th anniversary this year. Uh, I think it's oh, 1969, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. coming soon on the High Ground Podcast, we'll be discussing uh, on a Majesty's Secret Service, probably sometime in the oh, very yeah, near future. Yeah, I very enjoy it, Bond film. So, so, yeah, back on subject after a yeah, little Sorry, sorry oh, Christopher. <laughs> yes, I, I, I love, I mean, I love Christopher. Here's Lee. an interesting question, because he's been in Star Wars before. Yeah. Do you think he would be good in it now as a different character if we hadn't had that you know someone else would make Count Dooku I don't know Ian McKell or something <laughs> he'd have probably had the character the I think he'd have had probably if we're going to if we're going to obvious characters he could have played just some actual Sidar character in The Force Awakens yeah do you know I had an interesting one though Snoke Ooh. even if it was just the voice you know how how then you, yeah. then you really probably couldn't have just cut him in half in episode eight. You would have no. probably had to have kept him. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would, yeah. Because Chris Lee does not go out like, a, like that. No. I mean, he's, again, back to Lord of the Rings. If you watch the theatrical version of Return of the King, his whole part is cut from it. And he was pissed, apparently, like, mega yeah. pissed, because Saruman's death is, like, a big part of the books. So when you watch the extended version and you think, why was this cut out? You know, the film's long enough as it is, so I'm sure another 10 minutes wouldn't have hurt. Yeah. You know, you don't just get rid of Christopher Lee. The boss has actually got it. She's threatening to make me watch him soon. Oh, the uh, you the need deluxe to editions. Them, but you, I, I can't them stand the books. Years ago, I've seen about 15 years ago. The film, they're, they're fantastic. The Hobbits are awful. But Christopher Lee's in them again, so yeah. you have to watch them because he's in it. Uh, it's, it's part of a trade off, so we'll probably end, I will end up watching them soon. Because... Yeah, no, I. I um, do you know another franchise I think he would have been great in Harry Potter? Dumbledore. I don't know why he was never in it. Or even just one of the Peyton ghosts or something, you know. But then again, uh, I, I can actually answer that one because he was so associated with Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So if you associate with Lord of the Rings, you're going to have to bleed over. So that's probably the yeah. reason. There's, I mean, there's so many things now that are out when he's dead that you think, you know, like, why can't you have been in Game of Thrones or, you know, yeah. or something, or a Marvel film. Good. I'm going to put you on the spot. Who would he play in a Marvel film with the existing characters? Well, I just had a really bad thought in my head, and now I feel extremely racist for thinking it. But because I was thinking because he's played Fu Manchu, maybe the Mandarin, but Trevor Slattery. Yeah, I, I don't know. He played Trevor. That is possibly too Trevor. racist. Um, no, Trevor. Yeah, he could have done the Trevor thing. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. Have, I've never seen Chris Lee swear, so having him say something, say the... <laughs> Ben Kingsley's great in that, isn't he? But... Yeah, but Tre Trevor, you know. Uh, he would, yeah, I, I, if, yeah, that would work. I don't know, yeah. I, um, Jarvis. Yeah. But then again, how would you work it? You'd have to change the whole AI to me. Or what if he was Alfred? <laughs> Come on, no, what's his name? Is that too much Alfred? Yeah. Pass, isn't it? Michael Caine. Uh, what's his name? Uh, no, oh, Jarvis. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I, when I saw that, I just thought he looked way too young to be Alfred. Alfred has to be this old guy that's been through it all as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he has to be, be considerably older than... Maybe, maybe don't necessarily say Alfred was a villain then. Yeah, probably not Alfred then. But, yeah, I, yeah I, just there's so many roles now that you think could have done this, could have done that. They could have had him in this for like 10 seconds and that. And you just, like, that's the sort of guy he was where you get excited seeing him you think oh Chris Willis in this where's he going to be where's he going to be there he is I liked him when he was in the Tim Burton films because as soon as he yeah. comes into it you just know that was because he, he, he fit in perfectly with that with, yeah because yeah. it were one of Tim Burton's heroes was Vincent Price so you look at his yeah. early work Vincent Price is in a lot of his early work yeah he's in Edward Scissorhands wasn't he yeah, yeah. and what's this I can't remember the name of his first one it's what uh, it's Frank and Weenie oh Frank and Weenie yeah 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 so and it's so to me, it, to go from Vincent Price to Christopher Lee is is natural progression for yeah. Tim Burton, and I just I think know. Tim Burton was 
was secretly, well, not secretly, but like sort of quietly gutted that he never got to use Peter Cushion as well. Yeah. It's quite sad though, but when you think about you know, the relationship that Chris Philly had with Peter Cushion. And there was a famous quote from him where he said something like, um, imagine like someone in your family's just died and it was so sudden that you never got a chance to say goodbye. He said that was what me, me and Peter had. And and you, you feel so sad that yeah. like they're these guys where you're like, oh, they're the horror guys. Well, they did. They were so much more than that. Even Peter Cushion, like I'd say Peter Cushion was typecasted. Yeah, unfortunately, definitely. Because of, you know, he was Sherlock Holmes. He was Van Helsing. But he's such a he's such a nice guy in real life, from what I've read, that Peter Cushion's a guy I always give time of day for. You know, like he's Tarkin as well, you know. I still try to get hold of the Spider the uh, the uh, Doctor Who the Doctor Who Oh yeah. He appeared in I remember watching him as a kid, but yeah, I think yeah. that at the moment where I've seen him on digital downloads are overpriced, when I see him on D V D overpriced. But I really Considering it's the... not canon. Yeah, is it? It's not it's not canon. No, I don't know the background behind it, but I don't know. I just I, I watched him when I was a kid and and, and, and and he he was brilliant. He gives us all, yeah. And even in Star Wars, you know, he's he's not really in it that much, yeah. but you feel his presence, don't you? Constantly. He has some of the best dialogue in a evacuated our moment to yes. try it. Uh, uh, no, Bio and Betty. Yeah. I'm so glad they resurrected him in Rogue One. That's that was so good. I mean I, I wish just seeing a hologram of Count Dooku would have made my day yeah. as well in some some of the new films, you know. But um, I mean, he even voiced him in the the first Clone Wars, the the, the animated movie that came out in cinemas, yeah. which was basically the pilot for the TV yeah. series. He voiced the Count Dooku in that, nice. and then Corey Burton voiced him afterwards. But he, Corey Burton sounds like he's really so much. I think it was him anyway. But he's, oh. Yeah, he's just he's just one of those guys, isn't he? Like, yeah. And it's like he's gone now. Like there's no more Christopher Lee. It's quite. It's so sad. And he did metal albums. And yeah, dude with, with a legend, Man at War. Oh. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he's, and he was an actual count as well. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we really pull up. We really pull up his uh, his, his resume. Yeah, and I Paul's mean, right? I forgot he did voices in Kingdom Hearts two as well. I mean, like he's oh. done loads of video game stuff as well. Okay, that's how long his resume is. Yeah, we are now. We're, we're just we're just going down a pretty decent spoke and actually read it, and we're just doing, we're just. Oh wow, we played someone deep. called Callum in that film. There, funny man. Which one? Funny. At the top. Funny man. Let's have a quick look. I've never heard of that. Funny man, Christopher Lee. It's a de- haunted by a demonic jester intent on murdering his family. Oh, so he's a good guy. <laughs> Whoa. We're gonna to have to type his name into. Yeah, I noticed the other day on Google, on um, not Google, on uh, Amazon Prime. They've got a lot of B movies. Yeah, they Seriously, have actually. Yeah, loads of B-movies. so have Netflix. You think like some of these films are just rubbish? I really want. I, I've, I've got it in my head. I really enjoy B movies at the moment. Yeah. And I really want to. And it's like I just want to watch some of these cinema releases. And then there's some some main cinema ones. Oh my god. Oh, Captain look at what we just found. Yeah. 1979, Captain America 2, Death Too Soon. Who did he play in this? Let's see how far is he in the casting. Christopher Lee, Miguel. So he was in a a Marvel film in 1979. I'm sure I've seen the first one about years ago with Ronnie Cox. Is it playing the president? That was a different one. It was the 90s one. I I know what you mean though. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. I've actually. You can actually find that on YouTube. It's terrible. He's got it's. It's uh, He's got rubber ears on the suit. It's like a bondage suit. See, I don't. I don't even. Captain America, even now. It's still a bit cringy for me. Like, I mean, I like it. Yeah, Steve's sticking his finger up at if you could see this. Um, I like Captain America's journey. So, like, I like him at the end of his journey. Um, but I just think he's a bit douchey at the start. I like Captain America. <laughs> he's uh, but this goes on to a theory of mine that uh, you're a superhero. The uh, superhero that. You want the superheroes that you like, the superheroes you like in comic book genres, like red movies, the characters that you can relate to, the characters you want to be like, because when you watch a film, you uh, you have to relate to a character, and the character that you relate to, you see as an extension of yourself. Yeah. And I think that the, the superheroes, especially because there's so many of them, that the... Uh, I'm sorry to go off a bit subject a little bit, just answering a question. We like is, isn't. Pardon? We like tangents. Yeah, so the uh, superheroes you relate to are the ones that you actually see as an extension of yourself, so... Uh, characters like your Superman and your uh, Cyclops and Captain America, for me, all represent 
the goody two shoes, the nice people, the ones who, no matter how bad it gets, they always want to do right, and that's why I think people like that. People who like of the characters, like your Iron Man, your Wolverine, uh, your Punisher, even because Punisher is actually your Punisher. Yeah, your Batman. But even your Punisher, if you look at, it, if you take away all the violence, Punisher is still, in my opinion, very much like Captain America because they. We do it with violence, but in his heart, everything he's done is justified by doing right. Yeah. So, whereas Wolverine is your, uh, and your Han Solo, Wolverine and your Han Solo are the, the they wanna be bad guys. Yeah, yeah. They wanna be bad guys, but they're good guys. The bad guy with the, the heart of gold, who they do everything, they'll go around, they do things by their own, they wanna be on the loan, they, you know. But the even, Robin Hoods. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the, your Punisher is your good guy, who always does, and your Punisher, your Captain America, your Superman, yeah. are all the characters who want to do. Right, that's the heart of what they do. Mm. Even though the Punisher will go out and kill loads of people, in yeah, his heart it's justified by, in his head, in his mind, he is doing right. So that's why I think that, you know, next time you're a superhero film, you find out what character, think about it. Do you like this character? Because you want to be him. Especially yeah. now with cosplayers. They're avatars, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Can't say I've ever, yeah. Back to Christopher Lee, though. I don't think I've ever, like, looked to Christopher Lee and thought, Oh no, I think I have like thought I want to be that that character, but I want his voice. Yeah, I want his voice. His voice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'd like to speak like. But then again, uh, horror is if I'm right, romance through gothic. Yeah, Who's the well, one. Yeah, gothic was the first sort of. I need to remember my English literature degree now. Um, yeah, if I remember correctly, gothic was the first time they updated the old medieval romance concept and they added in the darkness with it. So yeah, that's why your Draculas and your Frankenstein's and your Wolfman, they all work through that filler, basically. If you look at if you look at if you, if you look at now, if you look at uh this is no disrespect to Robert Patterson, I think he's uh, I think when he will come into yeah. his own. But if you look at the character he plays in Twilight It's not compared to your traditional Christopher Lee. Yeah, it's not gothic. No, it's, it's just creepy. It's yeah, you look you can understand why people will fall in love with Christopher Lee. Yeah, the eyes but, and the and the voice, like you said. Yeah, but you've got whoever the character's name is. Edward Cullen, is it? Yeah, something. Robert Pattinson, please. No, it's not disrespecting. I don't want to disrespect Robert Pattinson. This is disrespecting the character. He reads the dialogue. This, this, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, if you look at him, it's the dialogue and the character is crap. Pardon my language, but he is. He's a crap character. All the other vampires are great characters. Yeah. Even if you don't like the films. Relatable. I can't relate to Edward Cullen. No. Like you can, and he's supposed to be the lead vampire. Well, lead in terms I of story for character. I don't relate to pedophiles anyway. No. So he, he, he is. I mean, call <laughs> spade a spade. Yeah. I mean, if, if, uh, if it was a 40-year-old, uh, if it was, say, uh, uh, someone like uh, an actor in his 40s and 50s. Yeah, yeah. Hitting on a 17-year-old girl. It's creepy, yeah. Yeah. But because it's a hundred and something year old vampire played by Locked a twenty year old, body. yeah, yeah and we're supposed to go. One, the alarm bells is still an yeah. old character. You can't I mean, change. Even Interview with the Vampire, which is even considered by some people to be like overblown vampire nonsense, they even acknowledge the fact that it's creepy by having Kirsten Dunst have to stay as a child because she's a vampire now. Yeah. You know, and it's fucking creepy because yeah. like who wants to be a kid for their whole life? Yeah, and it's the same here, like. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's why you know it, it's, there's there's no romance about no. it. But you you understand we we you're telling the, the Christopher Lee and traditional yeah vampire hammer horrors yeah. Yeah, yeah and well he's you know other than Bella Lugosi which you uh, you know yeah, even he's the, kind of charming isn't he? yeah you know, he's he's like he's Hungarian he's dark he's European you know and he has that's that's undoubtedly where the Dracula voice comes from yeah. as well, isn't he? Hello, welcome to my guest. Whereas Christopher Lee did it. With his own voice. I gotta say, when I think Which about works. Lugosi, all I can think of is, uh... Man, man, throughout his face. No, no, uh, <laughs> what's his name, uh, what's his name, uh, in Ed Wood. Ed Wood, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's... Pull the strings! Pull the strings! <laughs> what is cut off? That's, that is actually quite accurate, apparently, according to what he was like. And he was played by... No, Martin Landau. Martin Landau, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's to me when I think of Bella Lugosi, I think of the incredible Ed Wood. If you've not seen Ed Wood... It is fantastic, yeah. I love yeah. that film. It, I mean... It's like the original disaster artist, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I, I love seeing works, you know, about these awful shitty films, but you can make a great film about yeah. how they were made. You know, you can watch the worst film in the world, but watching how it was made is fascinating. Yes. You know, it's just, 
which we're going about before we even start the podcast we're we're about yeah, Harry yeah. Potter, how uh, you can if you if you, if you can go visit uh, exhibitions about films and TV shows you might not necessarily like but you come out and get a bigger yeah. appreciation after. show me how it's made and I'll listen yeah. you know intently it's, it's, I mean I'd, I'd love to linking it to Christopher Lee I'd love to have like a if they did a hammer experience like Harry Potter that'd be fantastic I, but I, I think they've destroyed all the sets yeah. haven't they, you know? they funnily did. enough my, um, my old lecturer at university his father-in-law was a guy called Bernard Robinson he was the set designer for all the Hammer films. Nice. So you can imagine a lot of my meetings were all like, well, what was it like treating him? Oh, <laughs> I, got, I, I got video pieces, you know, going, you know, linking on. I walked past the College of Arms in London. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was in London. I remember, last year. Yeah. Steve likes this one. And I, I got such a buzz out of it going and taking a look at it. And I'm like, this is, <laughs> this how this is where he was. Yeah, this is, you know, I might not be used to film, but this is actually the real one. Yeah. But I just thought, all I thought was on a magic secret service. I think the I exteriors were the real one. I said, wow. I'll have to work to I'm, I'm sure the exteriors are, but obviously the insides of the set. Yeah, I got such a kick out of it. And that's, and you know, linking back to James Bond, which goes back to Christopher Lee again. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it, it's, you do, you get such a, a, yeah. a buzz from, like you were saying. Yeah, I think, um, going back to James Bond as well, I think I always, I always enjoy watching Man with a Golden Gun because it's, I, it, I think it's, I, I always class, like the first two Roger Moore films I class as like a duology where he's sort of, dark, he's a bit darker and he's a bit more mean than he is later on. You know, I think after that it's the, it's the funny Roger Moore, isn't it? And the, the sort of bubbly Roger Moore. But I think that's all down to having Christopher Lee in that film. You know, he's he's constantly like, he's the opposite of, at sometimes in that film, he's the one that's making the jokes and the, you know, and the, the dark humour and Roger Moore's the one that's not impressed, you know, whereas it's the other way around, usually he's teasing the villain, isn't he? Whereas this time, you know, that scene where he's sitting, pointing the, the golden gun at him and he's saying like, you know, basically, I am you, like we were saying earlier, that's a fantastic scene. And I, I actually really like Man the Golden Gun, I think it's fantastic because of Christopher Lee mainly. They at the table when they put the gun together. It's, it's just... Yeah, it's brilliant. And I, it's, he says something like, you kill for queen and country. And, yeah. you know, I I can't remember what it is he says, but it's basically like, we're the same, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah, it's just only he could have delivered that sort of, that, that speech. Because with Red Grant, you don't really get a speech. It's just like a kind of, I think they know they're like each other. They're like the opposite, yeah. aren't they? But they don't get to talk. Whereas with Scaramanga he's the original sort of silver isn't he yeah I think I think silver is definitely based on Scaramanga yeah. and Trevelyan yeah because they're, they're characters that weren't in none of the novels so I think they become composites then the, yeah. the ones that, because in, in the novel Scaramanga is just a thug yeah. and he's just a he's just a, a hitman he's nothing else and you don't really and it was, it was the last book he wrote and you just think oh I don't really like this guy this guy's kind of boring but making Christopher Lee play him as the opposite of Bond, it's just great, like, I, it, it's just, a sh I'm, I'm still, I can't believe he's dead still, like, I keep saying it, but it's sad that we won't see anything like that again, yeah. it's just, yeah, Is he, bummer. He, 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 but yeah, I mean, even though he played, he did have kind of warmth about it. He did, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, even when he did play, some film villains were cuddly, like, I yeah. mean, I uh, don't know if you've seen Return of the Three Musketeers. No plays um i think he plays a cardinal in it and he's like a sort of pantomime bad guy yeah. in that but he's good at doing that as well and, and even when he just lends his voice to things like uh, i think it's the jabberwocky in alice in wonderland isn't it? yes yes um and i'd, yeah. I'd imagine he's in corpse bride as well as he he's he's in corpse bride yeah past the cars yeah, I thought... Gals we well. I, oh, I forgot he was in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Dr. Well, yeah. Wonka. Um, yeah, but I mean, even when he does does a voice, it's just, you think, you get chills, don't you, yeah. when you hear it? It's like hearing, I don't know who, there is no real, there's no real analogue now, is there? I think in terms of voice talent, you know, you, you know, you've got Sir uh, James Earl Jones. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure, yeah, yeah. And, and both in Star Wars. Yeah. Going yeah. back to Star Wars. Um, I think I'd probably voice-wise as well, Patrick Stewart's 
the one for me where you sort of hear it and go, that's Patrick Stewart. You know, like there's certain voices where you go, I know who that is. Right? Yeah. And uh, Brain Freeze again. Ah. Ian McCallum? No. Uh, uh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. It will come to me. It will Morgan come Freeman. Me. Morgan Freeman. Yeah, I'm sure you should type seven in online, did you know? Yeah. Oh, this is Morgan Freeman. I'm sorry, this is when you do things off the cuff. Yeah, it's, I think it's going back to like voices as well. I think it's quite strange relating to Christopher Lee, but I always find black actors have the best timbre of voice. You know, like I think on uh, James Earl Jones has mentioned this, hasn't he, on a documentary saying about they wanted a darker actor, but not skin color, yeah. just in terms of voice, and then. You saying like I don't understand why a stutter of a Mississippi yeah. became the voice of Darth Vader, but you hear Darth Vader's voice and you think that's James Earl Jones, like one hundred percent, like no one else could do that. He's great in coming to yeah. America. Yeah, I, I love him just in general. He's just oh. you close your eyes when he's in anything and you think Darth Vader's on yeah. the screen, but you like just hearing Mufasa or something yeah. like that, and you just think it, it's this, it's the same sort of thing like with voices. I think Christopher Lee sounds like he has a sort of. He has like a black voice for me, like the, in terms of Tombo, you know, like yeah. he sounds like Morgan Freeman. He has that deep baritone, like booming voice that only black guys can do on on voice. And I think that that that's except for Samuel Jackson. Except Samuel, Samuel Jackson, Jackson yeah. Like Samuel and Jackson. Denzel Washington's got a really soft sort of voice as well. But generally, the black actors have a lot better voice delivery than than a white actor. I think. And less Oscars. And less Oscars. Do something yeah. about it, Hollywood. No, I'm sorry, Denzel that, Washington. Yeah. Denzel, what? I'm sorry, but Denzel Washington's Oscar was given because you get him in the Halle Berry Oscars the same year for films. It's like oh, you know, yeah, they yeah. did Caprio's one. They they, they give him. They were just for, fucks. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I mean, you look at it, it's like they screwed Denzel Washington over so many oh, times. I mean, they screwed DiCaprio so over so many times. Denzel Washington's done so many films where he should have got an Oscar. He's a fantastic actor. And they usually, like you say, they give them it for piffle. Like yeah. Halle Berry, I think it was for Swordfish, wasn't it? No, uh, Halle Berry was for was Monster. Monster's oh, Ball. Oh, Monster's Ball, yeah. Sorry, yeah, Monster's Ball, yeah. That's right. Um, And it was definitely wasn't for Die Another Day. No. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, I think I think it's so weird that the Oscars works like that, where they get they kind of go, "No, we better give them one for this." You know, it's what it felt like it's DiCaprio for The Revenant. Yeah. yeah, I think Tom Hardy should have had that Oscar, the yeah. best supporting actor. Yeah, it's I think just... DiCaprio should have got his Oscar for This Boy's Life. Oh, okay, yeah, he yeah. should have got it for This Boy's Life. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you look, you look at Scorsese's output, and what does he get it for? Good, um, no. The Departed. The Departed, yeah, which, which I think is one of his worst films. Yeah, he should have. He he should have either had it for like the Taxi Driver Good or Goodfellas. Goodfellas. Yeah, Raging so, Bull. Yeah. So, I mean, Johnny Depp's when he eventually gets his Oscars, that's going to be. If he's not Barney, I thought yeah. Oh, that'll be a sympathy. Not. That'll be a sympathy one as well. I bet Johnny Depp misses Christopher Lee as well. Yeah. Come on. He's the other Tim Burton muse. Yeah. I think in a way, Christopher Lee is like Tim Burton's muse, full stop, isn't yeah. he? Like, he's the guy that, um, because he's in so many of his films. In the, even if he was just cameo. Was he in Planet of the Apes? No, I don't think so. I don't know, unless he did a voice. That would be interesting. Year it was. It? Sleepy Hollow, I forgot he was in that. Oh, yeah. <sighs> so it also stars, if I'm right, Sleepy Hollow's also got Ian McDermott. Yeah, it has, yeah. Star Wars family. You know, you just know that some of these actors, some of these directors just literally hire Star Wars. Call it, well, you know, Tim Burns. Johnny Depp. Yeah. Uh, Christina Ritchie. Ritchie. Michael uh, Gambon. Harry, Michael Harry Potter. Michael Gambon was in it, yeah. And uh, Ronnie Richardson, Harry Potter, Harry Potter. We should just not mention his name. Oh, Jeffrey Jones. Yeah. Richard guy. Griffith, another uh, Harry Potter actor. Michael Goff, Falfred. Jeez. Chris, everyone's Tom in that. Batman, one, of course. Tim Burton's Batman. I Batman forgot, um, I totally forgot Casper Van Dien was, like, not seen after that film. <laughs> we get you, sir! Yeah, I, I thought he was, yeah, the great um, Super Troopers. Did you mean Starship Troopers? Starship Troopers. <laughs> Super Troopers, meow. Okay, Starship Troopers. They've got Super Troopers on the brain, okay? I like Super Troopers. Starship Troopers, meow. But, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I absolutely love Sleepy Hollow. I'm going to have to watch it again. I know Charlotte's got it. Uh, the boss has got it. So, but even okay. his role in that, like, it relies on you knowing who he is. You know, he just plays a judge at the beginning yeah. that sends Crane on his way, and you just, as soon as you hear him booming, like, Constable Crane, you just think, I know who that is. I know who that is. If he's on Planet of the Apes, I don't think he is. Because he got he got lucky on that one. Two thousand and one, wasn't it? 
Sorry, we're just looking for Planet of the Apes. Yeah, it doesn't look like he was in Planet of the Apes. He got lucky. I'm sorry, this Tim Burton's weak. That's to me is uh, Tim Burton film. It's not a Tim Burton film. Yeah, it's did not, not like that film. And I like the Planet of the Apes movies. So for that one, I think it's terrible. It's a terrible, terrible. That would been great seeing Christopher Lee in as an ape, wouldn't it? In like either one of the new ones or the old ones. He would have been playing. A, if he would have ended up playing one of the used <laughs> or, people. One, yeah. or a professor ape or something like that. I do like that. Sounds like a Simpsons episode, Professor Ape. It does, yeah. Has he ever been in The Simpsons, actually? I, I imagine he would have been. Is he, yeah, it's, 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 though, wouldn't it? Yeah. He's only in it for one episode. Wouldn't surprise me, but if we go back now. Good. This is why IMDB is good when you're doing podcasts. You can actually just pull things up at a uh, short notice. Oh, Gormenghast, I forgot about that. If anyone's never seen Gormenghast or read it, it's basically <laughs> the better, darker version of Lord of the Rings. Dark Shadows. He's in Dark Shadows. I think he's a sailor in Dark Shadows. And I like Dark Shadows. If you've not seen Dark Shadows, Tim Burton movie from 2012, absolutely fantastic. I liked it. It's also got Michelle Pfeiffer in it. Oh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer. Oh, I like Michelle Pfeiffer. Diva Green. That's a vampire film, isn't it? It is a vampire yeah. film. I think Alice Cooper in it. <laughs> Alice Cooper, he plays Alice Cooper. Oh. I've seen Dark Shadows. No, I haven't, no. I've seen yeah. some of the original series. That is, I've not seen that. Apparently it's not anything. The film's better, apparently. I don't so. like I was going to have a quick look on it. I want to see if this if I can. He'd have been, that, you know, you're on that right now. Um, I'd love to have seen Christopher Lee in Pirates of the Caribbean. He would have been... He could have been like a famous... He could have been... It would have been on the pirate if he was to be in Pirates of the Caribbean. At least I could see him would be on the Pirate Council. Yeah, or Davy Jones. If if he'd have been a bit younger, sort of. Yeah, I like Dive. Sorry, I like. I do Dave, like Bill Nye. Yeah, like but I mean, I forget Johnny Lee Miller's in it as well. Yeah, I forgot about. I, I, I we haven't seen him for a while. Actually. Sick boy. He's in um, Elementary a lot now, isn't he? Yeah, Elementary, and he. he I thought he was brilliant in Transporting too. I oh like god, Dracula two thousand and one. I actually thought Christopher Lee would have been in that. I've not when seen that, it. When I first saw that, so yeah, there's, there's quite a few people. Gerald Butler's in that. I'm sure he is. Gerald Butler. Yeah, so Dracula. is um, Seven of Nine from Any Voyager fan. Seven of Nine, the one wore the the Jerry tight. Ryan, Jerry Ryan. One. Yeah, Jerry Ryan. Is yeah. she in the new Picard or something? She is. Yeah. She's she, she, not wearing any tight stuff though. Uh, isn't she the one they got in just to try and boost it for the nerd territory? Or Voyager. Yeah, yeah Voyager yeah, was it's like cancellation we, territory. So you... Three, so. So sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, it's in DNA, just, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Can I just say to you, uh, if uh, any of you fall into the hardcore Greek category, which, come on, we are, we are ourselves. We, we, if you listen we, to this, you are. Yeah, we are. We just want to say that there is hope out there. You can. You, you The timing is right. If you want to find yourself a partner, be it male, be it female, be whatever your preferences are, this is the time to get it, because there's so many yeah. things out there that goes through some things. It's hard for us. Yeah. <laughs> we've we, we both got into relationships before uh, this whole big boom. Find yourself, trust me, it's going a little bit off tangent again. Uh, find yourself someone that will let you put up, that'll put up with uh, you doing stuff, like if you do podcasts or you insta geek culture, you collect nothing but part of our language, but crap. Yeah. Find yourself a partner that will actually tolerate it and get one that actually likes it. So if you can do that, you're set for life. And this is the time before the bubble bursts to find yourself someone if you want to get into a relationship. If you don't, stay happy being single. But if you want to get into a relationship, this is now the <laughs> hard time to do it. Because there's so many out there and you're not we're not hiding in the woodwork like we used to. Uh, uh, we were at the WB at the weekend and I was like oh, saying, yeah. to the, saying to the boss, I, I, if you've seen my In the Geek Room, you'll know I wear a lot of Captain America t-shirts, and I was going to, I have multiple Captain America t-shirts, and I said to the boss, I said, uh, said uh, Captain America t-shirts, you wear it all the time, you have people that wear Captain America t-shirts, no, wear something different, so I pulled out a load of my t-shirts and ended up settling on a Star Wars one, yeah. <laughs> and she said, yeah, wear that one, and because I wasn't the one I was going to wear, I was going to wear a Hot Fuzz one. Which is like, oh, where yeah. is Star Wars one? You know, Hot Fuzz because of the friend, uh, David Bradley, and I was on to wear it because of the link for David Bradley, because I love David Bradley. And she was like, no, where are you, where are you Star Wars one? I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to wear my Star Wars one just so that you know, I'm good. You know, she, 
Jeez. <laughs> no, no, you date, date and follow fellow nerd or geek or whatever you Trekkie or whatever you call yourself. Whatever your persuasion. Yeah. yeah just, if you get into a relationship, one of those, when you walk home with another bit of junk, which you've got no room for, it's more tolerable rather than say, you came home with that when we've got bills to pay. <laughs> yeah, so that's the reason you should, and the whole idea of doing a big a thon, be it a Star Trek a thon, Star Wars a thon, Harry Potter a thon, Christopher Lee a thon, Christopher Lee a thon, yeah. don't all tolerate it, yes. So, hey, do you yeah. fancy watching a Christopher Lee film tonight? Yeah, sure, which one? How did you start with Dark oh, Channel? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah for weeks. If you, date a, if you date someone that likes that kind of stuff, you can get away with it. You can indeed. Or educate them on it. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Ah. Uh, Going back, I actually started didn't watch Doctor Who until uh, I got with the boss. Yeah, and uh, she she was like, uh, I don't know, she used to hate Doctor Who, didn't you? I, yeah, I hate such too strong a word. Well, no, I actually did dislike. watch. Yeah, just like I watched two episodes and realized uh, the first two Matt Smith episodes and realized I was only watching it because of the hot chick in it. Sorry, Very sorry, nice. Karen. She is, but hot. you are hot, and the only reason I was watching Doctor Who is because you. And I thought, why am I watching it? That's the only reason I'm watching it. I switched off until I got with the boss, and she. Uh, and I ended up having to binge watch each season and ended up thinking <laughs> Peter Capaldi was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, sure. another unpopular choice. I yes, like Peter Capaldi. You've just, you've just awoken a great idea in me talking about Hot Fuzz, actually. Um, how cool would Christopher Lee have been as one of the NWA? He would have been in it. He would have been <laughs> he in it. He would have been cool. He would have been in it. You know what? It would have been for the greater good if he had it. It would have been for the greater good. Yeah. Yeah. Or the voice of the, the network in the world. So that would have been funny. Just hearing him saying, yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who would have beat Bill Nighy? Then Bill Nighy would have kind of yeah, played someone else. else. Yeah, yeah. Because Bill Nighy in, uh, in the, 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 the two... Wait, he was in all three Colorado, was he? He was in what, sorry? He was, Bill Nighy was in all three of the Colorado films. He'd have to play yeah, someone yeah. else. He's the stepdad and... In Shaun of the Dead. And he's, he's the, the chief inspector. Chief, <laughs> chief, uh, you know what? We're going to have to... Coming soon on the High Ground Podcast, we will be talking the about Colorado the Colorado trilogy, trilogy because... Uh, it it's one of the main totems. Sorry, it's one of the main totems of like pop culture, isn't it? Really, no. Yeah. It's like the uh, the Edgar Wright's the British Tarantino. Yes, isn't he essentially? But uh, we don't go into the cinema alone. <laughs> I've just got what you meant there. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that is yeah. Oh, so, I, what do you feel that Chris Philly would have fit in now? Is like the what? main query because I realise it's only been me talking about it. Sorry, way right, fitting into the day. Yeah, what what do you think? You said she. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen. He would have been in. I I just you know because I watched the new trailer for Kingsman, the mm -hmm. new Kingsman. I'm thinking he, he would have been. I'd like to have seen him in something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's just off my head. I would. If we're talking about if we if he was young today. And this goes back to the thing I said when I, when I watched Made in Manhattan, where you know Ray Fiennes and uh, Jennifer Lopez, which is the Cinderella story. This is the most so it's like Notting Hill, but uh, Cinderella. But to me, Made in Manhattan is the Cinderella story, but more more, more most literal because it's. I thought it was right. It was no, it was no thought put into it. But having Ray Fiennes playing at the same time, Hugh Grant was at his his peak, but and I thought that. Even though he, he was playing a generic character, I thought Ray Fiennes in that film was absolutely better than Hugh Grant. Because yeah. I thought he played the romantic lead better than anyone. And I would have liked to have seen Christopher Lee in a generic romantic comedy. You know, the person falls in, guy falls in love with a girl, and then it could be for the guy falls in love with a guy, guy falls in, girl falls in love with a girl. You know, whatever incarnation of it you like, but we'll just do the traditional one where a guy falls in love with a girl, they get together, there's a problem, they split it, they fall out and towards the end, they get back together alone and live happily ever after. That's Cinderella, the traditional Cinderella. I'd love to have seen him. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Lee's character falls in love with uh, one of the, you know, someone that's age apparent, and they go through the whole notions, and I'd love to have seen him pull it off just like Ray Fiennes did it so perfectly with Made in Yeah, Manhattan. yeah. So that's generically that's what i'd like to have seen him do and i think because of ray fines playing it so perfectly and i mean i'd like to have seen him do the romantic leap just because i think that a young we're talking say 30s uh mid 30s sorry early 30s to mid 40s i'd love to have seen christopher lee in that age range now yeah. doing 
that role, but with an age apparent, not with one of these ones where they're in their 50s and 60s and they're still hitting on the 20 to 30 year old. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, is. It, it, you have to do that a certain way, don't you? Yeah. Or it sort of is just creepy. Yeah. You know, like, it's something like Lost in Translation, sung perfectly in that. Yeah. But then, yeah, you've got like your Twilights and your. You, yeah, it's just creepy sometimes. But that's what I'd like. That's what I would like to have seen. Yeah. Christopher Lee do but to me, even though it's, it's a mediocre film at best, Made in Manhattan to me, in terms of potential, and this is the time. Cause more recently, uh, Ray Fiennes has been doing, like you know, in some of his general public, but we ever since in this list, we've known Ray Fiennes essentially as being, he's. Ray Fine to me is one of the greatest actors of all time, and his performance in *She Was Literally Got in the Oscar* because that to me represents the greatest performance ever committed to film. Yeah, and that's just my opinion. You everyone's entitled to their own, and to me that is perfection. And to have him playing villains, and just what you expected with Skyfall. Yeah, but when he plays the good guy, he plays the good guy better than anyone he can. And I think Christopher Lee, if he'd been given the opportunity, could have played the good guy uh, yeah, yeah. better than anyone because he had that um about him and it's you know like nowadays Le like Leo the character he could have easily have been he made all these great he made like this boy's life uh what's he did but great I mean and then he went into Titanic territory he could eat when he did Titanic he could easily have just been typecast then yeah and he goes on and look at his since like you say about Scorsese yeah since being tapped by Scorsese and Tarantino I mean Rick fucking Dalton in yeah. Once Upon a Time in Mexico, in Once Upon yeah. a Time in Hollywood, absolutely fantastic. And Brad Pitt as yeah, well, yeah. you know, yeah, Brad Pitt. they never worked together, that's oh. crazy. It's, and I liked Brad Pitt and Fight Club when he played Tyler, Tyler Sturgeon. Yeah, Brad Pitt yeah. can play, play great, but he can also play the out there characters and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. How Hollywood has now gone, that we can take these actors who, and then translate them into other films because we don't yeah. have to worry but you play, but before I started recording you did point put that point out of one like Tom Hanks yeah he's he's like he's the good guy in everything isn't he like he, you were saying earlier like the only time you've ever seen him bad and it didn't work yeah you know it, I I don't think Chris I think Chris Philly could have done a good guy it's just that we never really saw it you know and whether that's his personal choice or whether that was the studio saying Nah, you're you're a bad guy all the time. Can you just play a bad guy, please? You were talking about like, oh, no. the system, aren't you? The yeah, yeah. The whole system, yeah, yeah. Started out when it was the Hollywood system, then it moved on towards the end of the sixties and everything. But you have to play to certain things, and, uh, and the way they used to movies were more disposable than what they are now. Yeah, yeah. So people, when they go to see a Christopher Lee film, they expect this. There's yeah. Not, so it's you, you expect this from this actor, you expect this from this. So you the studio, Safer, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't ever expect Laurel and Hardy to do anything. Of the Laurel yeah, Hardy yeah. films, and that's what just what was expected of the time of the period. But now, especially the way cinema has gone, you know, because a lot of these films, when I mean, you look at uh, the likes of Oscar Isaac in in Ex Machina, yeah, and he Oscar Isaac can play dark. some dark, yeah, he can yeah. also play good, yeah. Samuel Jackson, uh, when he played in. Uh, Django Unchained, the same similar yeah, era yeah. to when he played uh, Nick Fury in Winter Soldier. At one point, you're loving Samuel L. Jackson. You can love him and you can hate him. Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson's another one that's he did you know, a Jumper as well, didn't he? Yeah. Jumper. I mean, it's a mediocre film, but he's good in it. Like the way he switches to from being Mace Windu to like at the time that was the big yeah. Jackson character, wasn't it? And then to be this like scary guy that hunts people. I think that's one of the greatest open, one of the best openings in modern times. Is and it's also one of the ones you can argue is painting by numbers. I suppose is if you want and a lot of Hollywood has this now. If you want to create a great villain, have him in the first five to ten minutes do something that make you scared. Yeah. For the central characters, it's moments you see Samuel Jackson's character uh, killing a jumper. You are now actually scared for the rest for the central character for the rest of the film because you actually fear that when he catches him he's not gonna he's relentless yeah yeah you're not gonna stop him you can't argue with him it's like the terminator in the original terminator you he's not gonna stop till he's finished his, exactly, his job yeah, yeah. and that's it and that's what hollywood 
doesn't do so much anymore. No. You've got to build the character. No, you don't. You just have the villain do something bad at the start. Yeah, of the you telegraph it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, something like Belloc as well in Raiders. You yeah. Know, you know, he's a bit less sort of sinister, but you know he's the bad guy. Yeah. You know, just from, this, from the beginning where, like, he sends the tribes people after Indy. And, you know, you think, like, oh, this is the bad guy. Like, it, it's it's just that sort of that sort of simple telegraphing that is missing. That, yeah, I think they they all have villains have to be like, well, they have to be. Some of them has to be good, and they used to be good people. You know, sometimes you can just have a bad guy be a bad guy, and it's yeah. cool. I say, just because nowadays everything like you say, everything has to be dark. Yeah, and yeah. It, it has to be motivation. Yeah, logic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But because yeah. That, uh, because we've all moved on from the point of the one dimensional. But do you think we used to be saying? Can we actually have one-dimensional villains now? Not really, no. But the thing is, if you have a one-dimensional villain that's nothing but evil, and it actually follows it through a path where he starts evil and he ends evil, yeah, that's sort of like, you, there's no reasoning. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's one of the problems Rob Zombie committed when he, when he remade Halloween, you know, he gave Michael Myers a backstory. You don't need a backstory. Michael Myers is a monster. That's all you need to know. He's the bad guy. He's going to kill you if you stand still for more than two seconds. You don't need to see that he was a you know, this typical abused child thing that all serial killers apparently are. You don't need to know things like that, you know, and I don't know, yeah, I think that's a sort of, yeah, maybe, maybe Chris Lee wouldn't have fitted in. I don't know. You guys, you got me into uh, into watching, because I don't do, I don't do horror. Yeah. You got me watching uh, oh, the new Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Because that, I like Danny McBride. Now, don't look at Danny yeah. McBride. He's also got, he can do comedy, but he can also yeah, do the yeah, Covenant. He, yeah, oh, come on, absolutely. I we'll have to talk about it another time. But uh, yeah, he is. Yeah, and I like the way he, I don't do horror, but I just I was on the edge of my seat watching that Halloween yeah. movie. How you would be watching the original? Yeah, and I like the way you didn't see his face, and I like the way that the uh, suit, and you actually only see the even his outfit. It's a different actor playing outside the suit, but you don't see his face. Yeah, and I thought that was absolutely superb as a one-dimensional killing machine. It's kind of like the Terminator, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I like the fact that he was, he actually cared, and he actually cared for the heroes rather than rooting for the villain. Yeah. It was, to me, that was modern, that was a masterpiece in storytelling, that new one was, in terms of horror. Yeah, and, and uh, as with everything in Hollywood, there is a link with Christopher Lee to do Halloween. Um, it was originally, it's the role he regrets turning down the most, is playing Donald Pleasance's character, Ooh. Dr. Loomis. He was originally offered that and he said no i think it'll be too ironically too cliche and he was later you know quoted later saying it's the role i, would, I wish i took mm. out of every role in my life yeah you know and then again most people know donald pleasance from that role now yeah 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 well, I no, mean, there's another link to start with there's another one <laughs> there's, a, there's a, a donald pleasance who's also in uh the debut full-length feature film of by george lucas yeah, THX, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Donald uh, Pleasance is another one of those sort of unfairly typecast people. Yeah. You know, with horror and he, people think he's just John Carpenter's muse. And you know, and John, he, he could do so much more as well. You know, like he's in he's in the Great Escape, like one of the greatest war films ever made, and he's fantastic in it. You know, and and it it, it is a shame that these you know like I I don't like to call them horror people because I'm sort of I'm I'm making that art like that typecasting i'm giving it a, a voice but the horror guys people associate yeah they can do much more and i think the reason they can do well in horror is because they can do other things look at jim carrey when jim carrey's deviated off from the comedy yeah exactly people, yeah. Don't, people find it hard to accept those uh, i do I, I jim carrey's comedy to me he's 100 yeah. com comedy you know like, i can't look at jim carrey and not think of Ace ventura or the riddler but then he's done so much more. He did that numbers, was it numbers or something? Oh, the number twenty three. Yeah, it's not a great film, but he was good in he's it. Sinister in it. Um, and uh, Truman Show. Truman Show, yeah, yeah. Man on the Moon. I liked him in Man on the Moon. He nailed Andy Kaufman. I still haven't seen that. So. I like it, but they're kind of biased. I, I, I haven't seen it, but I watched the documentary on Netflix. Yeah. What did you think? I, yeah, I really loved it. You know, like, I, but I think it probably make more sense if I've watched the film. But That's like I say, about enjoying the, the making or something. Yeah. Like, you know, so. I, it's Jim Carrey not in a Chris Philly film. <laughs> For some reason, I I can imagine Jim Carrey with Chris Philly. I don't know why. Let's go find out. Let's maybe, have a look. Just, Jim Carrey. I just imagine that. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Come on, IMDb. Stop being 
Dix. It's my computer, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, he's on a TV... Jim Carrey's actually on a TV show at the moment called Kidding. Um, that sounds like an adjective for being a paedophile, doesn't no, it? No, no, it's kidding actually... Around. It's, it's kidding, it's... I just want to look, look, like, I've seen the first season. I've been watched the first season. And I've got when it restarts. Jeff, a... This is a kidding, Jim Carrey. Uh, Jeff, a famous... Tw- Children's television icon struggles to retain his sanity. That just sounds all biographical, to be honest. Uh, it? It's good, it's good. Honestly, it's really good. And it's got Judy Greer in it. I like Judy Greer. Oh, I like and Judy Kaffee Greer. Kina. And Frank Langello, yeah. the link back to Dracula there. And uh, He Man and Masters of the Universe. Yeah, Chris Lee should have been that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a terrible <laughs> film. Yeah, a little bit trivia. What film did they siphon money off of to make that film? Oh, I know this. Um, what year was it? 1990? 87. 87. Um, oh, I don't know when I was thinking of 1990. Superman 4. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, because it's canon made it, didn't they? Yeah. Anchorman 2. Kick Ass 2. I don't know who's in Anchorman 2. Yeah, he's one of the news anchors. Mr. Pink. I don't Mr. know why I've got an image of him in a film with Christopher Lee for some reason. He was in Yes Man with. Uh... Maybe, maybe I just imagined it, but. Truman Show, Cable Guy, Ace Ventura. No, I must have just imagined it. He was in Batman Forever, which has got Batman language, you could do, yeah. but Jim Carrey, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jim Carrey is not Christopher Lee. So Turn us on the spotlight. We could night. do one on Jim Carrey though, because he has got an interesting career tra- trajectory, hasn't he? Yeah, Eternal Sunshine on the Spotless Man. I just want to point out that if you've not seen it, that yeah, you've got to be in the right frame of mind. I have to anyway just while watching. I've not seen Bruce Almighty. Have you seen Bruce Almighty? Chris Philly. Yeah. No, I've never seen Bruce Almighty. So. No, but Morgan Freeman, another person with a good voice in this, isn't it? Yeah, someone we did mention earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bruce Almighty's good. It's just, I think that was the last funny film he did for me. I liked him kidding. Uh, so. I think we're all Chris Philly now, aren't we? Yeah. I think we've done pretty. Yeah, no, it's, I, just, the... it's just a shame that, again, it's a shame he's not with us anymore because. There's, there are a few people even today that have the gravitas that he has, where he can literally just walk on, make you go, oh, Chris Lee, and then walk off yes. without saying a word, you know, or you hear the voice and you just think, that's Chris Lee. There's a few actors you can do that with. And it, wasn't kick in, now. it was a kick in the, uh, in the heart when he passed away. There's not many actors, because yeah. I think, you know, uh, with social media now, you, you see people who go jump on the bandwagon. Yeah. And someone passes away, it's sort of like they... They take the pain that other people are feeling and they want to be part of it. So they suddenly feel that they've got to post everything in, about said person. And it, it, with the likes of Christopher Lee, and there's not many actors, uh, you know, because I never, I never knew Christopher Lee. I never met him. No. But to me, Christopher Lee was always, from like the man with the golden gun onwards, you know, he was always there in the background. Yeah, and yeah. Especially, you know, with the Star Wars film, because I grew up with Star Wars and, Look at the bit when he's got Obi Wan Kenobi, you know, trapped and everything. Just those two interplaying with each other. You could tell you and McGregor was having a great time. Yeah, yeah. And it's when he passed away, it, it does it, it hits you in the heart because Star Wars, you know, Attack of the Clones was the first midnight screening I ever went to, and to actually see that, I mean, yeah. I know you don't like Attack of the Clones. This is we are going to be doing that one very soon. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's just the weakest. I don't think yeah. it's awful. I love it, and it's like I I met. Uh, a few months ago, I met Daniel Logan on the team because we're off subject again, and you, I, I had that buzz because of, he was in Attack of the Clones. Yeah. And, so this, it to me, it's, it is one of my favorite movies. I hate to say this, I that's it's in my top one hundred. I'll say that now, and I know they're going to get a lot of grief for that somewhere down the line. But uh, yeah, you got likes of him. Then you've got uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. Uh, he's Alan legit. Rickman. Yeah. I mean, for me, he fled one wasn't so much. I think it was more tragic for him because he was younger. I think he, the potential was taken away, you know, especially when you see when you play playing the Joker, and you know, you you saw that role, and you thought, yeah, this is a shame that he's gone. I, but yeah, I know, I like because they're more established, like Carrie Fisher as well. Carrie right? Fisher was one. That was the biggest really, one. That was a Bill, Bill Paxton. You know, yeah, people Bill that were, pa- yeah that that you grew up with. So yeah, and seen. people that who made who made. I mean. People who make films that actually, someone said to me, I mean, it's a slight, I'm sorry, but it's like, but when Alan Rickman died, someone said to me, 
about, isn't it a shame that he's, he's made all these films and all he's known for is playing Severus Snape, really, more than anything else. I mean, he was in Die Hard. And he, Alan Rickman had such a major career. But the thing is, I said, he touched so many people yeah. with that one role of Severus Snape. And he brought so much joy into people. Yeah. That it's better to be remembered for one role and to have touched so many people's lives. You look at the amount of kids that are going to go for a long time that will just know Alan Rickman or even Alec Guinness, who, when he, Alec Guinness passed away, because it, it wasn't, it didn't impact me as much as the likes of Alan Rickman or Christopher Lee. Yeah. Because the characters didn't mean so much to me as they do mean. Uh, but for Alan Rickman, it's the impact they made, and, and Christopher Lee was the impact that not only the character made, but the actor who played him. Uh, Philip, yeah, yeah. Philip Seymour Hoffman, my favourite Philip Seymour Hoffman role is Brant in The Big Lebowski. You know, I'm a big Le- Lebowski fan, and uh, and in Twister, I loved him in Twister. I forgot and, he's in that. Oh, yeah. and The Boat That Rocked. I, I watched The Boat That Rocked uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, he's and, doing Capote. He's good as well, isn't he? I see that, I want to see that. And it's just the impact they make in Christopher Lee, and the, they, for me, they all fall in the category of um, Carrie Fisher, which is I uh, want to talk about still after all these years, the impact that these people make through, and then you read into how great people they were and everything, yeah. and it's the impact that 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 they make, and it's just well, single performances. I think they're all in films that shape shaped me as a child, yeah. and same probably for you as well. Like, yeah, I mean, as much as we probably remember Alan Rickman as being Hans Gruber, yeah. there's probably not a lot of people. That would remind remember that as his ultimate role, yeah. because Harry Potter is such a juggernaut that it is. And yeah, it's not a bad thing to be remembered for that. Like, why why would it be a bad thing? Yeah, I was, uh, I was uh, we were when we were at the uh, WB the other day. Uh, I uh, I was just standing right every time I go there. I always have a minute silence around uh, the, the you know the potions area where the, the, the where uh, the bottom of his costumes are because it's sort of like that's to me Severus Snape. And it's you still I still can't go to the Harry Potter studios without paying my respect to that bit. Just, yeah. just taking a few minutes, uh, taking a, uh, some time outside of Oliver and the shop where they've got John Hurt's costume, because you know Alien and like War Doctor for me, he, he, more than Oliver and but they, they played characters. That, he, I mean John Hurt's career was, was superb in nineteen eighty four. Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, Alien. Alien. Yeah, yeah. and you. You can't, I, for me, I can't go past without paying my respects to them where there's a little piece of where they were. Yeah, yeah. I, ha- yeah. I have to do it. I mean, if there was somewhere where I could go to, if, if I went past somewhere that was synonymous with Christopher Lee, I would be taking my time out to remember Yeah, I mean Christopher Lee. That, I mean, and think how many potential places that could be. Yeah. Like, he's been in so much. There's, you know, and it, it is kind of sad that like, no, but I mean, that, that same thing applies, you know, people saying, oh, well, it was a shame he was just Dracula all the time. Well, was it? Like, I mean, did how many people now base their performance of Dracula on Christopher Lee? Yeah. More than Bella Lugosi. I mean, Bella Lugosi was buried with his Dracula costume on. Wow. That's how much he meant to that role. You know, and if these roles mean something to people, then why are they, so it's a shame, dot, 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 was remembered for that role. Yeah. You know, you know. People don't remember obscure roles as, as much as they might be a great role. Yeah. Ralph Fiennes or Rafe Fiennes, Rafe Fiennes. sorry. Um, you know, people aren't going to remember. Sadly, people most people aren't going to remember him playing Amon Go from Schindler's List. They can they remember Voldemort? Yeah. Or M. You know, because they're the roles that, like you say, touch more people. I mean, I'm not saying Schindler's List didn't touch loads of people. Yeah. It, it no doubt did, but. If you're looking um, at box office, you're looking at yeah, bigger box office. Yeah, yeah exactly. If Schindler's you were to list. ask the average person on the street, do you remember him playing this character? Then they'll probably say, yeah, oh, Voldemort, isn't it? Yeah. You know, why... Or Patrick Stewart, yeah, that's Jean-Luc Picard. He's even said in interviews, like, um, I, there's a great documentary called The Captains. I've seen it. With the, yeah, with William Shatner, where he goes around and yeah. talks to all of them about how it's affected their lives. And um, Patrick Stewart's like, he's right at the end, he's sitting with them and he says... Um, are you happy with being remembered mainly as Jean Luc Picard? And he says, like at first, no. You know, at first I had my bags packed because I thought this show was going to get cancelled and it was rubbish, and I was shouting at people to be professional. And he says, and now it's the only role I'd ever want to be remembered for because so many people find it so important to them. And it's the same thing, like Christopher Lee. How many roles has he played? But you know, it doesn't matter if he's if he's the, the Dracula guy or he's Count Dooku or 
he's the Tim Burton guy, like, he's Chris Lee still. Yeah, and even if they are remembered by the majority as that one performance, yeah. but you're still going to get these people that will discover him. If yeah, you got, exactly. If you've got someone like, uh, like again, Ray, Ray Fiennes, for me, Ray Fiennes is Shinder's List, and, and that's yeah. me, and I'm, uh, I do love him in Harry Potter, and I, I, of course, you know, the other ones, but to me, Ray Fiennes, you know, but I, I go, it's like with uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. He, he's barely in Big Lebowski's brand. But he was also in The Hunger Games. Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I saw it in cinema, and I don't talk during films, so it's a rule. Um, but I whispered under my breath, Goodnight Sweet Prince, from his, when he was on screen on his last ones after he died, uh, the last time we came to so, because I had to pay my respects and tribute to him, but even though I said, because at the end of the day, yeah, uh, I loved him as an actor, and I, yeah. and I, 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 I he, he went too soon, and it's, but someone like that, you know, people, some people will know him for that, other people will know him for different things, but it, it uh, yeah. So it, it, people find this really obscure Christopher Lee film, and they, they found that they discovered Christopher Lee through a bigger film, and you work your way back because you can find that where you work. Yeah, people. And I, I fell enough um, at work the other day. There was a film on on break called Battle of the River Plate, yeah. and it was an old World War Two film like with Anne and Coyle in it, and it was just like it was on in the background. And I was I think I was just on my phone or something, and I looked up, and there was a there was like a waiter guy, a Mexican waiter guy, and I thought. That looks like Chris Lee, and I went straight on IMDb. Yeah. It was fucking Chris Lee, yes. and I just thought, like, as soon as I looked, I thought that's Chris Lee, like, and that's how, like, that's that iconic. Yeah. Like, do you know that face anywhere? Like, even if it's one of his early films where he's not playing a big part, it's it's Chris Lee, like, and yeah, it's just it's just sad that we're not going to be able to do that anymore. I think. But you actually find that you do find that if you love up you, you if you do love that performance that yeah. one that captures your attention you do just you want to go if you love films you want to go and explore yeah you do and you go and explore their back catalog yeah. and so know. typecasting and uh, stereotyping yeah, no because you can actually open someone's mind up yeah you look at all these kids that watch harry potter then they'll, they'll love Voldemort, and then they might go out and actually educate themselves and actually watch Schindler's List. Yeah. Uh, Say, like, what else has this guy been in? Like, yeah. yeah. I think it's a good way in schools if you've got the. Uh, well, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, with, you know, Star Wars and uh, Harry Potter for, uh, forever. But you can go, well, Schindler's List has got. Uh, it's got Qui Gon Jinn and Voldemort in it. Do you want to see. So, uh, so it's a good gateway to get kids into watching something different. Yeah. I watched Blade Runner as a child. Didn't get it until I was a bit older. <laughs> I still don't. But it's, yeah, it's, you know what I mean. I yeah. didn't like it. I did not like Blade Runner. No, I don't either. Year. I don't think it's. I don't think. It, I think that was mismarketed for things yeah. for that reason, wasn't it? You know, like oh, Harrison Ford's in it. You have to watch it. Yeah. Harrison Ford's in it. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> But now if somebody, someone, because uh, we're in October, it's October the 1st, 2019. Yes. Uh, we will be doing, we'll, we'll do a talk about it at the end of the, it, it, yeah, coming we'll, soon, uh, we'll, we're doing Blade Runner. Pay tribute to Rucka. Well, yeah. Rucka Hauer. Um, well, we'll do that soon. We'll do our Blade Runner one this month, because it has to be done. Uh, we're going to be sitting down and watching Blade Runner soon. So, not for a podcast, we're just doing it for ourselves. Yeah. This is October 2019. And, uh, yeah. So you, we get into Blade Runner because of Star Wars, and this is how you how you discover things. And with, with someone with a in such a great catalog like uh, Christopher Lee, you can discover stuff. Yeah, I mean it's almost. I think he's done over two hundred films, hasn't he? Yeah. So, I mean, like the brother man not, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Or um, someone I didn't realize was in so many films the other day is you know Frank Welker. Guy yeah. who does the voice for everything. Is he Scooby Doo or something? Yeah, he was Scooby Doo. He was Abu in Aladdin. He was, he's done voices for things like dogs and films when they can't be asked filming the dog barking. Yeah. You know, he just he does. He used to be Megatron as well, didn't he? Yeah, uh, and got all the draw. That was terrible. Age of Extinct. Eight hundred and forty-three like, credits. Jesus Christ! That's just as an actor. I'm uh, sorry. Any Odin in Guardians of the Galaxy TV series? Does he do? Can't just say so he's got his hand in everything. He's got his hand in everything. Or his voice. Scooby Doo. <laughs> Fred Jones and Scooby Doo. So if you didn't know that, Megatron also the Scooby Doo and Fred Jones. 
and Nibbler in Futurama. Yeah, he's like the Christopher Lee of voice acting, isn't he? <laughs> like he's in everything. And World of Warcraft. It's like let's say about that with that. I just I associate that with Warhammer. Yeah, I'm not going to go on that because I alienate the fans because you know how I feel. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, I'm going to go this tangent for a second. You know, it's like, you, it, every geek culture has hierarchy, right? And I know some people, I know some of the gate world, I know some of the World of Warcraft and Warhammer, I will look down on the uh, Star Wars fan and the Trekkies. So, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. my There's one is, I look hard, I look, I, I, my one is, I look down on the ones, what's the shop, is it War? Games Workshop. Games Workshop, anytime I'm going to Forbidden Planet and I pass one of those, I always look in the window and see them playing their toys uh, before I go to the <laughs> <laughs> I never did it. I never. Did it. I, I never played the game. I, I used to collect the figures and paint them because I liked the art side of it, but I never played the game. So I walked into a video shop thinking it was a geek shop. Yeah, I thought it was comics, and they walked out thinking, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, game, yeah, game, yeah, was good. Game was good. Game, game, game. Games Workshop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I worked in there. Oh, this is in the early nineties when I was looking for Super Nintendo games. I worked in found there was no video games. Hey, you want to come and play? Okay, yeah, slowly walking out. Yeah. Walk shop, forbidden planet. Actually, and they all look at you as well, don't they? Yeah, I'm like, it keeps them off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a pub that you walk into that all the regulars have yeah. a seat and you've just sat in one of them. It's, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't do this. I am going now because I do not do this sort of thing. I, I, I'll just stick to my comics. That was me, honestly. I'm not lying. This is me in the early 90s. It was like, uh, yeah, you know, place to do Super Nintendo games and, and comics, and that was and barely toys because there was hardly any around at the time. So yeah, toys were rubbish then. Yeah, that was before the big revival in '95, which we all felt, which went. It's kind of funny. Two years between '95 and '97, you felt you were made to feel weird when you were an adult going into a Toys R Us. Yeah, you had to yeah. pretend that you were getting for your nephew or your son or, or your daughter or okay, now whatever. Or niece. Funko pops up the ass for everything. Yeah, isn't there? Like, it's like you're going through toy shops and you you have yet you're literally yeah. Uh, you, you're not surrounded by kids. You're in toy shops. You just go and get people the same age looking for the looking for the, the looking for the toy that you're after. Yeah, that is so bad with the Funkos. <laughs> you don't see the kids. You never see kids looking at Funkos. You just see adults looking at Funkos yeah, in toy so, shops. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's um how many Christopher Lee characters you can get a Funko for. That's an interesting thing. If you know the answer. <laughs> I know we disabled the comments on the uh, YouTube videos, which we will be coming up on live soon, probably. Yeah, yeah, on iTunes. Um, but yeah, no, if you know any Chris Willey Funkos, uh, yeah, he collects them too. So. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the whole. Da- that's going to be the whole. Uh, you're not like it anymore. I'm actually being good. I'm going to cut down my collection a bit soon. I think. Well, not sell them. I'm going to stop. Slow down a bit. I've got no space. And besides, I've got more little. I've got more little knickknacks. I want anywhere. So. They are cool. Yeah, so it's. Uh, <laughs> I had loads of money, I'll just collect so many of them. I, I actually saw something in there. If I had, if I had three hundred pounds, I'd be buying a costume. They were selling it the uh, to uh, Warner Brothers studio. <laughs> they had a several snake one. I wanted it. Oh wow! Yeah. I was like, I want that. Not to wear. I just wanted it so it looked good in the in the in the room. In, in the, in the room. It would look anywhere, and I think the, the boss would let me have it now as well. So. <laughs> Yeah, if I, if I came home with a Star Wars costume, you're not putting that anywhere. Yeah. If I came home with a Harry Potter one, so yeah, you can stick it anywhere. Yeah, stick it anywhere you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I came home with a Princess Leia bikini, you know, I am not wearing it. I know, I'm not wearing it. You said you're wearing it, I'm wearing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Christopher Lee, you got lumped in with bikinis there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a cross dresser, I'm just happy when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> now this is what you all think. For the record, I have I do not wear dresses, but if I did wear dresses, that's my opinion and not yours. <laughs> we, we just alienated anybody. If not, you're a geek, you're entitled to do this. I've seen you really have this idea for a costume. Sorry, we're going tangent over the last tangent, that's right. Uh, you only have this idea, you ought to look kinda of cool, someone just as George Lucas in the cosplay. And you type it in and you're like Someone's so done it already. Done it. Damn. There are no original ideas. If you think you've got original ideas, someone's probably done it yeah. and hashtagged it with the word cosplay after if it. If you think you've got original ideas, don't go on the internet. Yeah, because you've probably found out someone's already done it. But yeah. it's taking that reach idea and making it your own. That's the way you do it. Look at Facebook. That's yeah. what they did to uh, MySpace. Find an idea and make it your own, and if everybody thinks it's your idea. Yay! <laughs> Well, we're tangent way too much on this one, I think, but I don't care. You're watching this game, so or you're, you're listening to us. So. <laughs> Final thoughts on Christopher Lee? Yeah, just sad. Again, I keep saying it, I keep saying it, but it is sad that he's not here anymore. Apparently, to, to to be in anything, even if it's just for a second. Yeah, I just think 
I think he probably would have found a place now. Just like you say, doing something maybe different to what he normally did. I don't know, yeah, it's impossible to say, isn't it? Yeah, he had a fantastic career, and the fact that we're talk talking about him really predominantly did play the villain. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think he'd be, I think he's happy with what he, yeah, he, he did, he accomplished yeah. so much, and the amount of films, the amount of lives he's touched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, just, yeah, I totally agree. Even without Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, he, you know, we'd still be probably talking about him right now, just on the basis of his other work. So, I think we've done a uh, little, so, uh, little uh, considering we didn't think about this until a few minutes before we actually no, did this. Yeah, um, I like this one. So, <sighs> so uh, expect more off the cuff ones. Yeah. So, uh, I always have the last word. I, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm so, I don't want to do it today. <laughs> You'd have the last word, Callum. Okay, yeah. So, I'm CBW, by the way. Thanks See you all the next time. guys. Callum, signing off. <laughs>